Welcome to Comics with Dan. This is the Comics Commute number seven. So I actually read a lot uh, over the last week. I was able to kind of finally finish some things up and opened up the ability to read some other stuff. So I finished, uh, as I talked about last week, uh, Jeff John's Green Lantern. Uh, so then I was, after that, I was able to read uh, One Week in the Library uh, by W. Maxwell Prince. I read... Uh, Transformers number six uh, finished up that arc, which is a pretty great finish. Uh, sad to see Daniel Warren Johnson leave art duties, but I'm sure he's got other plans. Uh, I read. I didn't get no one number eight. Uh, that didn't come in my pools. That one's always been late, and I'm not sure why. Uh, I think maybe it's just that it doesn't get ordered quite as much. Uh, I read Helen of Windhorn, number one, which was really fantastic. Just an amazing book. Uh, so I'll definitely talk about that a bit. Um, I started reading uh, the beginnings of the, the Clone Saga, the original one uh, from the 80s by uh, Jerry Conway uh, on Marvel Unlimited. So that one's pretty good. I, uh, I read Seven Secrets as part of the League of Comic Geeks book club. Uh, that was pretty good. I, I didn't. I wasn't sure because Tom Taylor is always kind of a big hit or miss for me. Uh, I think though he just shines so much when he doesn't have uh, constraints on specific characters. So when he did Injustice, he was kind of able to do what he wanted uh, with Seven Secrets. It's all original to him, so he uh, he was able to do what he wanted with them. Uh, and he did pretty well at the beginning of Nightwing, but um, I think that he kind of fell into the trap of he can only do so much with a character that editorial says that he can't change too much. So just last night I read the New 52 Justice League uh, trade, Volume 1. Uh, I had read that before on DC Universe Infinite, but I, uh, I just got a trade uh, pretty cheap at Ollie's. It's like 4 bucks for the trade, so I was really excited to see that. Obviously some amazing Jim Lee art. Uh, and uh, just an exciting uh, reintroduction to those characters. I think one of the best things I read in the last week was uh, Volume 1 of Philip Kennedy Johnson's uh, action comics, uh, World, War World Rising. Uh, Sam Pear's art is fan uh, amazing and fantastic. It's, it's just so good. I, I really liked what he did in Dark Crisis, that was kind of the saving grace of that event, to be honest. Um, but I mean, it was good enough that I gave Dark Crisis number two five stars because the art with the fight between Dick Grayson and Slade was so good that it deserved five stars. Um, but yeah, w War World is, I think, going to be a really amazing uh, series, uh, or a really amazing arc, rather. Uh, I really like the start of it. Uh, it feels it has the feel of a, of a classic run, and um, I'm also I'm waiting on volume two to come from the library uh, pretty soon here, and I've already have volume three, so I'm just waiting for volume two. Uh, and also with Philip Kennedy Johnson, I got his first uh, the first volume of his Hulk run. Uh, which I read issue number one, and I liked it, but not enough to keep it on the pool list. So I think that uh, I think that that's going to be pretty good. It's it, I, from what I hear, it has a really good horror element. Uh, so I'm ex I'm excited to to check the rest of that arc out, and then the library is ordering the second volume of that run, uh, which hasn't even been released yet. So I'm I'm excited to get that and uh, the Superman volume two, the Chained. Uh, which also hasn't been released yet, so that's that's exciting. My pulls this week, uh, I, it's actually a fairly big week for me. Uh, I, I don't pull a ton of books, um, but I this week I've got four, which is exciting. Uh, so I have Batman Superman World's Finest number 25, which, which is obviously, uh, it's got the anniversary issue on it, it's uh, it's got Lex Luthor and Joker, so I'm excited to see how, how that one goes. I think Dan Mora Joker is just, it is, 
is a sight to behold. So I have a hard time believing that this one could possibly miss. The other items I have on my pool list are Night Thrasher number two. Um, I'll, I'll pin a comment down below to check out the, the Night Thrasher profile that I did. Uh, and then I also did a short on a recap for issue number one. So uh, be sure to check those out uh, so you can get caught up and then pick up Night Thrasher uh, on Wednesday. I also have Nightwing 112, uh, which I think the lead up to this Fallen Grayson arc is gonna be really good. And then I'm really excited for the Fallen Grayson arc because we're finally gonna get a showdown with Heartless and it feels like we're finally gonna see some change with the character instead of, he's kind of just been floating around since the first arc of Tom Taylor's run. We saw some cool change at the beginning and then he's just kind of meandered around a bit and hasn't done a whole lot. I also have the Displaced number two, uh, which I really liked the first issue of that. And uh, it set things up really well and I'm excited to see where they take that one. So I have a lot of books to cover this morning and my, at this point in recording, my commute's about halfway over. So <laughs> I wanna make sure I at least touch on everything a little bit. Um, one Week in the Library by W. Maxwell Prince. Uh, now I can't really compare it too much to Ice Cream Man just because I've only read one issue of Ice Cream Man. Uh, but it certainly has a similar feel to the one issue of Ice Cream Man that I read. Um, the, the, the story is, it's very sort of self-reflective. Um, he, he takes a look at, uh, sort of different mental health issues, uh, throughout the book, uh, which I, I found really interesting. Uh, and it sort of ends on, a, and I won't spoil it, but it, it, it ends on sort of a strange note. Uh, one that I think that would only work for a writer like W. Maxwell Prince. Uh, so I, that one's definitely worth checking out, especially if you're an ice cream fan. Ice cream fan. Ice cream man fan. Uh, if you're a fan of Ice Cream Man, that's definitely worth checking out. Uh, I, again, I can't testify to its quality versus the, uh, the Ice Cream Man series, but... Uh, it's definitely at least worth a read. Seven Secrets is a really good idea. Uh, it's uh, basically there are seven secrets protected by this. It's, it's basically a cult. Uh, and there's a keeper and a holder of each secret. So the holder holds the secret. The keeper is basically the holder's bodyguard. Um, the, the premise then is that one, one of the keeper and holder duos uh, has a child and they're told they can't keep the child, which I felt was a bit of a, um, an odd choice, considering that they ended up giving that child to another keeper and holder. So I'm not sure why they couldn't have been present and done their job as keeper and holder, but either way. Um, and so then that kid, Casper, grows up uh, to train to become a, uh, either a keeper or a holder of one of the secrets. And so, um, without diving into it too much, um, there's a ton of action. Uh, there's some really good heartfelt relationship moments, which I think Tom Taylor's really good at writing relationships, uh, at least, uh, in, in, in some contexts, right? Uh, but he, um, he doesn't build a ton of character background here that I feel like he could. Uh, I, the, the pacing of this book it is rapid pace. So I don't know if he was under uh, a specific uh, impression that he was only going to have so many issues to work with or what, but pacing's always been a problem for Tom Taylor. So I, I'm not at all surprised that this book had pacing issues. But overall, um, I mean, if you like action and, and they're looking for a uh, unique idea, uh, Seven Secrets could be it for you. The art was a little more of the, the anime style than I'm, I generally prefer, but if you are, if you do read manga, then I think that you would probably really like this. So I read Transformers number six, uh, which was the end of the first arc. Um, and again, I, I'm not gonna spoil anything here because that only came out last week. 
Uh, so for anyone that hasn't had a chance to get it yet. Uh, but uh, the, the quality has remained through, uh, through the entire arc. Uh, and, it, and it finished on just as high of a note as it started on. Uh, again, Optimus Prime is there and is is a just he's he's the prime example of a hero in comics right now. I mean, it's I, I can't think of someone who's more noble and and gentle and powerful than Optimus Prime right now. Uh, he, Daniel Warren Johnson he he gets the character more than I think. I've seen anyone get a character in a long time. We also get to see Starscream get smashed up a bit, which is never a bad thing. Uh, he's just so terrible. <laughs> he's he's so terrible, but that makes it so compelling to watch Optimus Prime go toe-to-toe with Starscream. It makes me really wonder, I mean, how menacing is Megatron going to be when, when he finally gets introduced in this Transformers uh, book. Because if Daniel Warren Johnson has Optimus Prime and Starscream down, I just imagine that Megatron is going to be this this horrifying, you know, beast of of a of a character that that is it's just gonna be it's gonna be something to watch, that's for sure. I read Helen of Windhorn number one, uh, which is a Tom King uh, Bill Quist Evely book. Uh, hopefully I pronounced the name right. Uh, it was... I mean, I, I gave it five stars uh, on League of Comic Geeks. It's it's one of the best books I've read in a while. Um, the, the... The setup and, uh, you know, the protagonist introduction is just... It's expertly executed. The... Um, we we get introduced to, to Helen and we get a really good idea as to kind of what she's about. Um, and also some windows are left open to question what, uh, what her background really consisted of. Uh, but we, we definitely get a good picture of who she is now, uh, which I think is a really cool way to go about it rather than giving the reader all the context at the beginning. Uh, instead we get sort of the, not the final picture, but the present picture now. And then I'm imagining that we're going to get some flashbacks to uh, sort of where, what got us here today. Um, Evely's art is beautiful. Uh, I, I think when I reviewed it on League of Comic Geeks, I likened it to uh, Stephen Bissett's uh, Swamp Thing, which is extremely high praise because his pencil work on that series is astounding and Evely's pencil work on this series is just as good as Swamp Thing. So, uh, I think that, I think that the, the art is worth the price of admission alone. Um, it just fits her style so well. And, uh, we ended this issue on something of a cliffhanger. I don't want to, I don't want to say it's a cliffhanger actually. I think, I think it more accurately, it's just sort of an exciting moment, uh, to end the chapter on, uh, rather than calling it a cliffhanger. Uh, because there's not anything, any questions that we have other than, well, what happened next, you know? So I think that, I think you, everyone should definitely go pick this up. Uh, I'm so glad that I grabbed it off the shelf. I, I added it to my pools immediately after I, uh, after I read it. So, uh, definitely go pick that up. I read War World, or at least the um, volume one of the the War World saga. So uh, it has the makings of a classic Superman uh, run. I mean, it 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 just has the great Sam Pierre art. Um, we get Superman basically pleading with everyone around him that he needs to help these people that are on War World. Uh, which, is, if that's not a Superman characteristic, then I don't know what is. So, um, yeah, that, that one, I'm, I'm itching to get volume two of that. Uh, and, and I'll, I'll touch more on the whole story after I finish volumes two and three. Yeah, I'll, I'll be reading, uh, the Incredible Hulk volume one, uh, 
some really heavy uh, horror elements uh, that come out in that one, uh, which I've, I have been getting into horror a little more lately. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see where that one goes, uh, and then also volume two of that as well. So that should be that should be pretty exciting. I had to use my commute home this time to finish up the video. And I think that that's everything though. Uh, I, uh, you know, appreciate all the, the support I've gotten. Uh, make sure you check out the, uh, the Night Thrasher profile that I uh, released a few weeks ago. Uh, really excited about that one. Uh, make, sure you, make sure you check that out and check out Night Thrasher number two, uh, which is coming out tomorrow. And uh, thanks for watching.